I'm Todd Gailey, this is Christopher Wolfram. We're going to uh, present today a Mathematica application for controlling the AR drone quadrocopter from Mathematica. All right, so this is the, the drone. It's a recreational hobbyist level quadcopter. It has, uses Wi-Fi interface for remote control. That's what we'll be using to communicate with the drone. Uh, it has two cameras. The one in front is a 720p HD camera. It's got one on the bottom. It's a very small thing here, that downward facing camera that it uses for stabilization against the ground image. Um, it has a three axis gyro, three axis accelerometer, three axis magnetometer. It's probably got more <laughs> sensors on the thing. Uh, that it uses, it has an internal you know, air pressure sensor and it also has this ultrasound sensors on the bottom for detection of its height off the ground. Uh, it does have a very slick iPhone app and I guess an Android app as well that for piloting the thing, which we won't be using, of course. And you can take off this outer styrofoam shell for outdoor flying. And it's just this, this cute little thing with just the four rotors. And it really zips around outside without the shell. It's, it, it really flies well. All right, there we have it. Now, we'll have this thing in the air a lot. It tries to hover about three feet off the ground. So that's why we have the camera to try to you know, show you what it looks like if you can't see in the back. We'll have it up in the air a lot that you'll be able to see, but uh, its normal hover height is kind of low, so if you can't see it, you can look at the camera image. So Power makes the C language SDK available to developers. It's Linux only at the moment. Eventually, they'll, I'm sure they'll come out with the Windows version. I don't know about Mac OS. There is a Java-based SDK for Android developers that's coming, but it's not available yet. Uh, for the 1.0 version of the drone, there were several third-party libraries, one in Java, one in .NET, to control the drone. And Christopher and I worked a while back, just very briefly, with the Java and .NET libraries. They seemed to be kind of flawed, and we had limited success. But I didn't have a drone at the time, so I really couldn't debug it very carefully. Um, but in any case, they don't work for the 2.0 version of the drone. So we're stuck with the C language SDK. So given that I'm going to make a connection with the C language SDK, there's two obvious technology choices for connecting to this thing. And this is a quiz. What are they? MathLink and LibraryLink. All right, so in MathLink, we'd create some template file that would map mathematical functions like drone connect, drone hover into, this, into some C language dub functions. And then we'd have to write those C language functions we use MathLink API calls to read arguments off the link. We call the drone SDK functions, and then we would use MathLink functions to write the arguments back on the link. So some of the pros of the MathLink, well, one, I already know how to do it. <laughs> Two, the drone program runs as a separate process, so it can be killed and restarted without affecting the Mathematica kernel. Crashes in the program won't crash Mathematica. Now that's, it turns out, for various technical reasons, that it's kind of nice to have to be able to kill the drone process and start it again. Uh, because of the way the, the drone SDK works, it's really designed to be used as an application. So within one session, it doesn't really work to connect, disconnect, connect again. The cons of a MathLink connection, well, it's not the fastest possible method. And in particular, we're thinking about the streaming high definition video into Mathematica, may, maybe there's some issues with that. All right. So library link. Well, if you use library link, then I would write some C language stub functions again. They use the library link API to read arguments off the link, call the, call the functions for the drone, and then write results back to Mathematica. Um, and then the C language stub functions are mapped to Mathematica functions via a Mathematica function called library function load. So the pros of this, well, for one thing, I actually want to gain more experience with library link. Now, I've written library link extensions. I've written library link extensions that ship with Mathematica. But I'm not an expert, so I thought I, I want to do some more with library link. Another pro is that there's extremely fast communication because the library runs inside the Mathematica kernel process. In particular, this, what's very fast is moving large arrays of data between you know, the C program and the, and the Mathematica kernel. They can share memory, so it's very, very fast. And I thought that might be useful for the video. And another nice little tweak is that we can use a push style of communication where the C code can, can poke data into Mathematica rather than Mathematica having to continually pull the C code to ask for the data. And we'll use that for, for the navigation data. The cons are bugs in my program. Or, you know, of course I mean bugs in the Parrot stuff can, can crash the kernel. 
And obviously that happened many times in the development of this thing. Okay, so now, there's an example, one of the simple functions in the C code for the link. It's called emergency. Now, I, I'm sure we won't have to call this function, but, you know, it's there, just in case. Now, there's an emergency function in the drone, and this is a very simple call. We just call argument get integer to get the arguments from the link, from, from, from Mathematica, then this line in blue is the, really the only line in here that's not a library link-ism. This is the call that actually goes about and uh, calls the function in the drone stuff. And then I call set integer to put a result back, and I return. So this is a very stylized thing. I showed this in my earlier talk in connectivity as an example. All library link functions look essentially like this with the blue guts uh, different uh, from one case to the next. It's very straightforward. All right, so then what does it look like in Mathematica? I'm gonna sort of walk up the chain from the C code into the Mathematica layer. So in Mathematica, I have this line, which calls library function load. So it find library, finds the library, and library function load loads that C code into Mathematica in, as a defined Mathematica function. And the arguments here tell, are me telling library function load that this function takes an integer and returns an integer. And so it's called emergency func. And then, really, the drone emergency top-level function that's uh, you know, exported from the package is just a one-liner. It just calls this, this emergency function thing with an argument. So that's, for a very simple function, that's, that's the stack of code. There's one interesting aspect that I, one of the main reasons I wanted to use library link, because there's this technique that you can use in library link where you can uh, create something called an asynchronous task. So that's what this function that's what this function here is doing. It's creating this asynchronous task in C, which is basically a thread. You don't have to worry about what's actually happening here with any of the arguments. But there's a way to create an, a thread in the C code that runs and then periodically, in, so in the body of that thread, I have something that looks like this. And again, yeah, you don't have to care about the details, but I'm, I'm creating something called the data store I'm populating it with data, and then I call this raise async event function, which is a callback into Mathematica. This is sort of the name of the event, and this is the data store, this is the data I put in, which arrives in Mathematica as a list of rules. So I can, so in the thread, and this is happening 30 times a second, it's poking this nav data into, into the Mathematica kernel. So rather than having some loop in Mathematica that's polling the data, I can just poke the data. And so if people are interested in programming things that like a data feed or something that, you ready, you ready to try this? I'm like speed doing this. Take off. All right, here we go. It's flying. <laughs> <laughs> and now I can make it land. All right. Now let's try. Um, let's make it do something cooler. Um, I'm gonna now I'm gonna make it try and follow a path. So first I have to write the, the path out, which I had written down here, but now I don't have it. So okay. Okay. Let me see. Just make sure this is right. All right, he, he, he's going to execute. So what he has is, is uh, a path like this that Christopher has generated, and he's written a function called drone fly path that is going to cause the drone to go in, on, on that route. Is that in yards or? <laughs> it's, it's in it's in magical units. It's yeah, it's in an undefined one, drone unit. One unit is the maximum speed of the drone in whatever direction it is for okay. one second. So it's maximum speed for one second. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's okay. Uh, you ready? I'm about to start it. Todd, I, I'm ready. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to run. I'm supposed to run herd on this thing. Make sure that it doesn't uh, <laughs> take it off. Flying path now. It's gonna go there. It's gonna go up, <laughs> down, and then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So now that. let's let's try and keep going. Um, why why don't you write your you know? Yeah, you know something. Let me do one last thing while you're you uh, you can fly the thing more and talk. I'm gonna try one last. Way to resurrect this. Maybe if I just do. Um, so, okay, drone. Let's see. Um, I can get. Let's try this. Actually, I'm gonna do. 
drone, since we also can get video data from it. Problem? So if I I can get the video I data now, I have to hurry to type this. Is that right? Um, yeah, that's right, but. Uh, It, it doesn't matter, so oh. then we'll be able to see oh, it. I oh, yeah, you have to say bite. But th they can't see it. Yeah, I know. I'm going to hold up the camera. All right, okay. So now I have to, because the projector does not work, <laughs> just point, point it at this. So now we've got up this pallet here, up in the, this corner. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, so it, there's, there's live nav data. You see the pitch and roll sensors, and, and the yaw meter, see, for the heading. And then uh, we've also got, you know, video data. See, there's live. And switch, switch, switch the camera. There's a downward-facing camera. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to I know, click I'm, I'm patiently on that thing to... Yeah, there see, there's are. a downward facing camera as well. Um, but go back to the front camera. Okay, now let's. We have one. Let's see if we can get our one yeah. last, most exciting demo um, that is not on this computer. So, Todd, you'll have to write it <laughs> really fast. I'll have to write it really fast. Um, yeah. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this out for a second just so. All right, so you can uh, warm them up. Okay. So, okay, we just have... Oh, you know, why don't you take some questions? I, are, there, are there any questions then? <laughs> Try to imagine yeah. what your questions would have been. The range? Um, well, it depends. If you're going along, you know, just horizontally, about a meter off the ground, because that's its general hovering height, its range is about 50 meters. But if you're going up, I found you can go much higher than that because there's no, you know, ground and there's no obstruction at all, and so you can go, you can go higher than you can go out. Yeah. I need some special device, or it's just use Mathematica with the with the package. It's in, just in the it's just using Mathematica package and Ubuntu. <laughs> What, yeah, Ubuntu. It has to run on. It has to be 32 bit. It only runs under 32 bit Linux at the moment. It will be available on the, the site, the package. I will make the site, I'll make this package available. It needs a little cleanup, you know, not related to that. We just had a networking problem with the drone. Um, I, I will make the package available. Yeah. Are the, uh, for all of the sensors that, that come with the. The package, you can the, the, they all come within the drone, and you can access all of them through the through the um, the API. And so, yeah, you can access them all in Mathematica. Um, all right. So, yeah. It, okay. Hold on. Let's take it off. Right, this is this is now, guys, meant to be our kind of final thing. I would like to take us up higher for this, but is it um, ready? Tell me when it's ready. Should be ready. Okay. So, so hold on. So okay. So I, I, I've written a very simple loop. It's less than 140 characters. Um, <laughs> good. There. Let's see. Let's see. Will this work? Let's go. Yep. Ah. <laughs> and now, now this one says. Right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See, less than 140 characters, so I can type it really fast. <laughs> yeah, that, that's an interesting testament to what's built into Mathematica, that in one line of code, you can write something that makes a drone respond to signed commands.